Things are looking busy in here, Nobby. Yeah. I don't know what's come over everyone, but they're acting crazy. Crazy? Isn't that a subjective term around here? What? Never mind. What sort of crazy things? People attacking each other for no good reason. And jumping to their deaths, too. We haven't seen such carnage since the rule of Lord Snapcase. We've got riots out there, and they're not even being started by dwarves. I've never seen anything like it. It's going to get worse. How can you tell? Trust me, this is only the beginning. I need to get into the Unseen University, and I want you to help me do it. How? Can't you get me some kind of warrant or something? No, absolutely not. Vimes would go spare if he knew I'd given a search warrant to you. A search warrant? Yeah, it's a piece of parchment from the patrician allowing us to search a premises. Um, or is that a premise? Well, I need one. I can't do it, Luton. It's more than my job's worth. The survival of the city might depend on it. You'd say anything just to get your own way. All right. If that's the way it's going to be. How did you get into my office the other day, Nobby? Uh, the door was open. No, it wasn't. I always lock my door. In that neighborhood, my coffee maker wouldn't last ten minutes if I didn't. Well, I, I found my way in. Let's just leave it at that, eh? How would Vimes feel if he learned that you'd been breaking and entering onto private property just to fill your own pockets? You're not going to tell him, are you, Luton? He'd go spare. Well, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. What would I want my back scratched for? I mean, I'll ignore your transgression if you get me a warrant to let me into the university. I don't know about this, Luton. I, I think... Act now. You can think about it later. Okay. Wait here. Well, if I couldn't count on him as a friend, I could always count on him as a coward. Don't get out before somebody sees you. Consider me gone. Catch you later, Nobby. Uh, yeah, right, Luton. Open up! Open up! Hold on, hold on! What is it? Oh, it's you. I have here a signed parchment from the Oblong office allowing me access to university grounds. Let me see that. You'll see it's completely in order. All right. You can come inside. Where did you get this from? I'm a private investigator. I got this through legitimate channels. What sort of legitimate channels? That's not for me to discuss. This is most aggravating. Right. Here's what's going to happen. You wait here, and I'm going to go and have a word with the watch. If this checks out, then I won't have any choice but to let you in. And if it doesn't, I'll be back with the watch to have you arrested. Is that clear? Perfectly. Don't touch anything, don't go anywhere. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly. I don't like you, Luton, and I don't trust you. But you'd better not cross me on this. I'll be back shortly. I look forward to it. 
Sheesh. What did she think she'd do to me? Choke me with a duster? Now to find Gellid. I'd have to be fast. There was no telling what Foams would do when she got back. I certainly couldn't count on Nobby to back me up when the old battle axe came storming into the watch house. As I slipped into my wolf form, I smelled blood. I followed the trail of blood from the concourse up onto the rooftops. I found the Bledlow's body by the observatory. No attempt had been made to hide it. I don't think the murderer cared. I could hear voices coming from inside the observatory, and even though my better judgment said to stay away, my curiosity drew me on. I hoped there was a limitation to how many times curiosity could kill the werewolf. I made my way into the observatory, and inside was a wizard whose voice I recognized. Satrap. I wasn't sure what he was doing, but it couldn't be good. The stars are right! A bit further! Now, left! Left a bit! A golem was operating the cranks for the observatory's main telescope, and Satrap was calling out instructions. I guess he was looking for something. Mr. Newton, do come in. I've been expecting you. You've been using your magic to spy on me? No. I saw you through the telescope. Mind telling me what you're doing? Oh, the same as everyone else. Waiting for the end of all creation. <laughs> all creation? Well, Nylon Athotep might only destroy Ankh Morpork to begin with, but I'm sure it will get around to destroying everything sooner or later. It's all just a matter of time. So you're the leader of the dark sect of Nylon Athotep, then? Luton, I am the dark sect. They would be nothing without me. And you're a wizard? The Professor of Astrology, as it happens. I acquired the job only recently, although it has been empty for a while. Mathom was interested in the post, but I was fortunate enough to dispose of him as part of the summoning ritual. So there was some internal politics involved in that murder? Oh, make no mistake, most of those eight murders served another purpose. People don't become cultists because they want to help the gods out. They know that it's a good way to get what they want and to justify whatever unspeakable acts they want by blaming it on a god. Carlotta needed Reagan killed because he was blackmailing her and Mundy had the sword. What about the merchant Gaiman? He and Kondo never got on. For all I know, there were reasons that the other people were chosen as well. It's often the way of these things. Kondo's dead. I killed him. Well, that'll be one less thing for Nylon Athotep to do when he gets here. How many of the cultists were secretly in the dark sect? Only myself and Kondo. But Foyd was easily manipulated to our ends as well. He really had any idea what was going on. We just used him because it suited our purposes to do so. Foyd couldn't have told anyone what we were doing because he only barely understood anything that was going on around him. What about Gellid? Did you kill him? Yes, he had to be removed. He was still loyal to Anu Anu, and he had outlived his usefulness. What have you done with Carlotta? 
But as far as I know, she's still tending the wounds of that wretched excuse for a god. You pulled the wool over her eyes, didn't you? Pretending to worship Anu Anu. The wool? I pulled the whole sheep. <laughs> Was Horst somehow involved in your plans? Horst? Ha! Without Horst, we'd have never gotten Monday staying in the Octarine Parrot. The trouble with trying to murder in a geometric shape is you're really quite restricted as to where you can work. So how come Horst's name isn't on the list? He's not a cultist, Luton. He's just a greedy troll who thought helping us would get him the sword. Instead, it's going to get him and everyone else killed. I really think you should have let me say that. I mean, you say it in such a disappointing fashion. I can deliver lines like that with much greater dramatic effect. You're a vain, arrogant, dangerous man, Satrap. Thank you. Where's the trapezohedron? It's funny you should ask. <laughs> I was just looking for it now. <laughs> Once we have our hands on it, nothing will stop Nylon Apatep. The whole of creation will be destroyed. <laughs> Don't you think that laugh is a little over the top? Listen, Luton, there are fewer perks than you might think to being what most people would consider an insane psychopath plotting the destruction of everything. I have always thought that a good dose of mad laughter was something I had earned the right to indulge in. This whole plan is crazy, Satrap. No one in their right mind plots such mindless destruction on such a large scale. You need help. I have all the help I need, Luton. I have Nylonathotep. It's not helping you. It wouldn't help anyone. It is totally evil. Evil? No. I will not accept that. It is conditioned simply to survive, and it can survive only by dominating all other life. When all other life is suppressed, then we will have peace. Wars will end. It is a power not of evil, but of good. Satrap, if you had created a spell that could destroy all forms of life, would sweep throughout the disk and leave nothing in its wake. Would you allow its use? It is an interesting conjecture. But would you do it? Yes. Yes. To hold in my hand a scroll that contains such power. To know that life, death on such a scale, was my choice. To know that the faintest of breaths speaking those words would end everything. Yes! Yes! I would do it. That power would set me up among the gods, and through Nylon Athotep, I have that power! You're deranged, Satrap. I thought Mooncalf was bad, but you take the honors. I can't allow this to continue. I have to stop you. You cannot stop me now! I'm invincible! Give it up, Satrap. It's over. I pursued Satrap up onto the roof. His robes were cracked with the stench of Gellert's blood and I couldn't control myself. The next thing I knew, Satrap's body was tumbling down the roof into a crumpled heap below. Get down here! This isn't over! Don't turn away from me while I'm talking to you! Come back! This isn't over!
It is for you. Oh, uh, black specter of the cold sleep of death. Leave me, your humble servant, so that I can... Wrought in thy name? You should get out more often, Satra. I live to serve you. Really? Any good at making curry? Um... No, but I am causing death and destruction on a scale as yet unprecedented. And you think that makes me happy? I'm not the god of death, you know. I'm just death. I'm just providing a service. There are times, you know, when I get really annoyed by you mortals. Does that mean I'm going to be punished for all eternity? If that's what you want. Isn't there some way I can bargain with you? Nothing springs to mind. Surely, surely someone has found a way to attempt to avoid the final curtain? Well, people sometimes challenge me to a game. Do they... ever... win? No. But someone once challenged me to that one where you knock a little ball out of a hole. Flog, I think it was called. What sort of game is that? A really stupid one to play against a person who spends every second working on his swing. Can I play you at it? If you like. Last time I got a birdie on the 18th. But it was its own fault for flying so low. I'll, I'll do anything t to save my life. <laughs> Whatever you ask. You're afraid of dying, aren't you? I, I, I didn't think I would be. But I was wrong. Here. Take my hand. There's nothing to worry about. The hard part is over. Why are you being so nice to me? I tried to destroy all of creation. Well, nobody's perfect. The huge telescope was too large to be moved by hand, so a nearby golem operated the cranks. The floor of the observatory was decorated with the 64 signs of the zodiac. They were all here. The celestial parsnip, the cow of heaven, the knotted string, even Okjok the salesman. The golem didn't say much. It wasn't their way. Two conquerors had given me a star map that was supposed to lead to the jewel he was looking for. I looked at the star map and back to the mosaics. The map seemed to include a constellation. All I had to do was find out which one and tell the golem to move the telescope to look at it. Well, it was a plan of sorts. The Celestial Parsnip was one of the most famous constellations. By drawing a line across its length, you could find Hubaris, the hub star, which used to lie exactly over Kari Celesti at the hub of the world, until two... As a result of this incident, three traveling salesmen mistook Hubaris for an omen and arrived at a stable in Sirit, trying to sell their cheap perfumes and embalming oil. Life's like that. The flying moose, my birth sign. Apparently it was a rocky sign, but I didn't know why. I didn't know anything about Gahuli, the vase of tulips, 
apart from the fact that it didn't look at all like a vase. It looked more like some careless sky god had spilt something. The double-headed kangaroo was the astrological birth sign of the coward. It had that characteristic quality of most constellations in that it looked nothing like what its name suggested. What it most resembled was a ball of string, and it was hence easily confused with the knotted string, which was the birth sign of the dismally confused. The small, boring group of faint stars was the least remarkable of all the constellations. I suppose the small, boring group of faint stars might have been on the map, but if they were, they'd been drawn much brighter than they really were. Swing the telescope around to face the small, boring group of faint stars. The stars seem to be pointing at the Selachi Mausoleum. If the map was right, the jewel was somewhere inside. Even with Al Kali's death, I still felt like I was being watched. I couldn't see anyone following me, though. On the floor was an ornate device for navigating across the stars. The central atrium of the mausoleum opened up so that you could see the sky. I guess on some nights it must have been quite a beautiful sight. But this wasn't one of those nights. I used the astrolabe to see exactly where Two Conquer's map pointed. They seem to be indicating a grotesque in the entrance chamber. I don't know who thought it was tasteful to make carved statues that were part human and part mythical beast, but frankly, I thought they looked awful. I searched the grotesque carefully and concluded that it was a cover stone for something underground. I pushed it opening up the crypt below. The stale air told me that this chamber hadn't been visited in hundreds of years. In the gloom, I could make out a single sarcophagus. The sarcophagus didn't look like any recent design. In fact, I was surprised to see one in Ankh-Morpork at all. It must have been imported from somewhere. The lid of the sarcophagus was sealed shut. On the sarcophagus was a circular indentation with a square peg coming out of it. The only time I saw Mundy, he was playing with this coin. A metallic flat disc with a square hole in the center. The coin had markings on one side that I couldn't read. 
It wasn't from any nation I'd ever heard of. Mundy's coin fitted the indentation perfectly, and with it, I could easily turn the pen. There was a faint click, and the sarcophagus opened. Inside the sarcophagus was a suit of armor, grasping a glowing gem that could only be the radiant trapezohedron. I wasn't expecting the armor to burst into life, though. Thanks a lot. Four hundred years I wait for you to come and let me out. And the first thing you do is cut my arm off. It'll take ages to sew back on. I'm sorry. I just sort of acted reflexively. So you instinctively cut the arm off people you meet? If they come bursting out of a coffin, yes. It's a sarcophagus. A very nice sarcophagus. Donated to the order by some nice people. In Jelly Baby. And you're vitally impaired. Vitally impaired? What's that supposed to mean? Hmm? Call a spade a spade. I'm a zombie. Right. If that's the way you want it, I need that jewel. I'm sure you do. But first, you must answer the riddle. And prove your worth. The riddle? Indeed. Are you ready, mortal? This is ridiculous. I'm in a real hurry and I need that jewel. Oh, please. I've been here for 400 years. Please let me ask the riddle. Make it fast. All right. What is... Uh... Oh, bugger. I've forgotten it. You've forgotten it? Well, it has been 400 years. You see how good your memory is after four centuries. Especially when you've got mice. Can I have the jewel or not? No. I have to ask the riddle. How else am I going to know if you're a follower of the dark cults? Let me get this straight. You can tell if I'm a follower of the dark by whether or not I can answer a riddle. Absolutely. So how does that work, then? Are the forces of darkness incapable of answering riddles? I'm sure the gods would never allow the unworthy to gain control of this. Interesting theory. Look. I need that jewel, and you're just going to have to find a way to give it to me. The Order decided that we'd ask a riddle to determine the worthiness of anyone petitioning 
for the trapezohedron. I have to ask a riddle. You mentioned the order. Yes. The order of the sacred tulip. You must have heard of us. Let me guess. You went out on rampaging crusades across other people's nations with some spurious religious purpose and came back having stolen a fortune from so-called inferior nations and then started getting involved in ecclesiastical politics on the proceeds, hmm? Those were the days, hmm? Yep, you got it in one. And the order buried you with the trapezohedron. That's right. They needed a guardian, and I volunteered. You volunteered to be buried with the jewel for hundreds of years? I thought it'd look good on my record. Can't you just make a riddle up? Well, there was one specific riddle. I was supposed to be asking. But since you can't remember it, you need a new plan. Why not just make one up? All right. What is... Um... Um... No. Sorry. I can't do it. My mind's a blank. You know what it's like when you're under pressure to perform. You just can't do it. The city is going to be destroyed because you don't perform well under pressure. I don't believe this. Look, I have the golden falchion. Surely that counts for something. <sighs> Oh, I knew you had the sword, but that's no help. If you're on the side of darkness and you have the falchion, then I definitely can't give you the jewel. How did you know I had the sword? I saw you coming in the jewel. Really? Did you see anything else? Oh, I've been watching the progress of the sword since I got here. In which case, you must have seen Mundy hide the sword in the crate and me recover it from Vault 51. Yes, I did. <laughs> so, you saw me killed by Anu Anu. Oh, yeah. That big dog creature. How did you survive that, by the way? Carlotta had turned me into a werewolf. I thought it might be something like that. They never give you the whole story with those cliffhanger endings. I remember 200 years ago when I saw someone go off the cliff in a cart. Only, it turned out he actually leapt clear at the last minute. I call that cheating. Anyway, did you see when Anu Anu summoned Nylonathotep? Oh, I see. That's what the big cosmic horror was then. What did you think it was? Well, I thought it might just have been fog. The reception in here isn't very good. If you saw all that, you must know that I'm not with the forces of darkness. Hang on. You were there when this cosmic horror was summoned? Uh, yes. Then why didn't you stop it? 
I was being restrained. Come on, just give me the jewel. No can do. <sighs> you saw me defeat Satrap, wasn't that in? Didn't you hear what he said? No sound with the jewel, I'm afraid. You just get pictures. Do you know what's most ridiculous about this? If I was with the dark sect, I'd just use the sword to kill you and then just run off with the jewel. You know, that's a very good point. So I'll tell you what I'll do. Either give me the jewel freely, or I'll pretend I'm with the dark sects and I'll just take it. You're not leaving me many options. Jewel, please. Here you go. Thank you. And may I say, I hope the next 400 years just fly by. The guardian of the radiant trapezohedron had been in the crypt for centuries. That was a degree of dedication to work which I couldn't quite comprehend. For an artifact of near unlimited power, the trapezohedron was surprisingly unimpressive. Horst! I was wondering where you had got to. Then we have been engaged in similar pastimes. Luton! Ilsa. As you can see, I have been forced to take more drastic action. I dislike having to take such radical steps, but since the untimely demise of Mr. Alkali, I no longer have the luxury of observing events from afar. Let her go, Horst. Let her go, Mr. Luton? You make it sound as if she is my prisoner. I am merely keeping her well protected against the more hostile elements of this wretched settlement. Let her go. That is precisely my intention, Mr. Luton. But first, you must fulfill your agreement with me. You want the sword? Indeed. You agreed to bring me the sword, and I am here to collect. No deal, Horst. I need the sword to stop Nylon Athatep. Indeed. And what might that be, sir? It's a creature from the Dungeon Dimensions, and it's loose in Ankh Morpork. That's as maybe. It still doesn't change our agreement. You promised me the sword, sir, and I am here to collect. If I give you the sword, thousands will die. Oh, come now. The world is full of people. What are the lives of those insignificant specks? compared to our own desires. We, sir, are breed apart from most people. We see what we want, and we take it. If a few tiny lights have to be extinguished to achieve our goals, then that is unfortunate. But it is of little consequence. We're not talking about a few lights. We're talking about a few thousand lights. Maybe hundreds of thousands. Then we will have to learn to live in the dark. I can't do it, Horst. Oh dear. I thought you were a man of your word, sir, but it seems I was mistaken. Very well, then I am forced to take more drastic action. I don't know how much pressure it would take from my fingers to suffocate the young lady here, and I'm not entirely sure that I wouldn't apply slightly too much pressure and snap her spine. However, you have forced me to experiment. Luton! Oh. <coughs> All right, Horst. You win. Let her go. Excellent. I thought you were a man of reason, sir, and I was right. I admire a man who is not so stubborn as to throw away what he values just for his stubborn pride. You've got what you wanted, now let her go! <laughs> I took Ilsa back to my office. What other choice did I have? I felt so stupid. 
giving Horst the sword and staying with Ilsa as the troll disappeared into the night's fog. But even if I'd tried to follow him, the dark magenta stench of nylon athotep drowned out every other scent in the city. There was nothing I could do. After we'd both calmed down, I told her everything that had happened. So Satrap was looking for two conquers jewel. That jewel is known as the Radiant Trapezohedron, and I think it can save the city, but I have a nasty suspicion that we need this sword as well. The Radiant Trapezohedron. Yes, it never occurred to me that they would be the same. The descriptions of the Trapezohedron are vague at best. Satrap must have been trying to imminentize the Garunan Eschaton. Can you try that again without sneezing? The Garunan Eschaton is one of the many myths concerning the end of the disc world. It's very obscure. What's it about? It tells how some of the entities from the dungeon dimensions have been trapped around the disc world. Some in the lost city of Leshp, some in the heart of the Garuna Trench, some in places men don't even have names for. When the Eschaton occurs, they are supposed to be released from their captivity and destroy everything they can get their tentacles on. The usual thing. Well, Nylonathotep is loose. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is the end of everything. Maybe it's a good time to borrow lots of money. Luton, I... I heard you'd been killed. I saw your grave. I heal quickly. I left a letter by your graveside. I know. I saw it. I wrote it when I had to leave you all those years ago, but I never had the courage to send it to you. I didn't know how to tell you that I was married. To two conquerors. Yes. He needs me, Luton. He always did. And in a strange way, I need him too. He gave my life meaning. I had nothing before I met him. None of that matters anymore. You never told me how you felt. What's to tell? I was born when you kissed me, and I died when you left me. I lived a few weeks while you loved me. Of course, I also died when I got stabbed in the back, but you know, that wasn't nearly as painful. I'm sorry. I bet you never thought of me as a man who could fall in love. I never thought about you at all. I couldn't. If I had, it would have driven me mad. I thought about you every day until I'd drunk enough to forget. I let my life slide till there was nothing left to live for but bitterness. Well, all that's going to change. I'm going to save this city if I have to die again to do it. And I'm not going to do it for you, or for me, or for the worthless people who live in it. I'm going to do it to prove for once and for all that I'm not the washed-up loser everyone thinks I am. And if it turns out that I am, then everything will get destroyed and no one will know about it. So hey, from where I stand, there's no downside. What are you going to do? First of all, we have to find Horst. How? I have no idea. I peered deeply into the trapezohedron and I could see an image of Horst with the golden sword. It looked like he was at the Maudlin Bridge. I took a few precautions and then headed down to the Maudlin Bridge to check it out. The image in the trapezohedron turned out to be right. Horst was at the Maudlin Bridge, and he wasn't alone. He and our mutual acquaintance seemed to be in some sort of dispute. What happened to our agreement, Horst? We were supposed to be working together. Really, madam? Then why was it that you arranged for Monday to sell the sword to you, and you alone? Just because I didn't trust al Kali as a courier, didn't mean I broke the agreement. And I suppose you're going to deny that you were involved in his death? I couldn't stop his death. But that doesn't mean I caused it. Doesn't it? What about you? 
It was you who set Malachite after me, wasn't it? I thought you might appreciate being reunited with your estranged brother. You sent him after me to try and slow me down. You are the betrayer among us, madam. Don't try and substitute me as the villain of the piece. Yes, I freed Malachite, and yes, I used him to slow down you and Mr. Luton. But you were the one who arranged his death. I didn't arrange his death. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And you put him there. I'm not here to debate the details with you, Horst. Why are you here? Give me the sword. After all, I've risked to get hold of it. No. As soon as my launch arrives, I will be taking the sword away from this God's forsaken city. If you want, you can have a small share of the profits. I am not ungrateful for your assistance in this endeavor. But that is all I'm prepared to offer. Why, you miserable excuse for a troll! Oh, come now. I could snap your neck like a twig if I wanted to. But I'm not going to, because there's nothing to be gained from doing it. Listen, Horst. Either give me the sword, or kill me. Because one way or another, I won't allow you to leave town with the sword. As you wish. I didn't think of myself as a murderer. But I wasn't about to stand by and watch Horst try to kill Carlotta. It was over in a flash. I don't even know how it happened. He's better off dead. Is that all you can say about him? He was some kind of a troll. What does it matter what you say about trolls? What now? We have to get out of the city. Can't we stop it? It's too late for that. Right now, Nylon Athotep is opening a portal to the dungeon dimensions above the city. When it grows large enough, everything will be destroyed. I have the trapezohedron. Doesn't that help? It means Nylon Athotep won't be powerful enough to destroy more than just the Circle C. And if we leave now, we can get away before the worst of the destruction. I'm not leaving the city. It's my home. It's not much of a home, but it's all I've got. You've got me, Luton. Come with me. I'll renounce the cult, and we can run free in the hills of Uberwald. It's not that I don't have feelings for you, Carlotta. I do. It's just that I don't trust you. You murdered your own brother. You'd have killed me if I'd got in the way. So what? So I'm no good. I'm no worse than anybody else. Think about it, Luton. You. Me. The wide open spaces of Uberwald. Or you can stay here and die with the rest of the rabble. Don't be a fool, Luton. Join me. I can't. I'm sorry, Carlotta, but there's only one way this can end. You're turning me over to the watch? I'd like to be able to run away with you, turn my back on the city, and just escape it all. But face it, Carlotta. I'd be dead in a week. Thanks for coming, Nobby. Hey, what are friends for? Mrs. Carlotta von Uberwald? I'm arresting you for conspiracy accessory to murder, attempted herbicide, and for being bloody stupid. You don't have to say anything, but if you say not guilty, we're liable to kill ourselves laughing. Oh, you'll regret this, Luton. Nothing's going to save you now. The only way to stop the destruction of the city would be to take the Falchion into the portal. And I hope you try. As he left, Vimes fixed me in his eyes, as if to say that this didn't make up for what I did all those years ago. But I didn't care about that. This wasn't about the past. It was about the future. I looked down at the hulking corpse of Jasper Horst in the river mud, and I wondered if I'd done the right thing. But life's too short for regrets, 
And if I didn't stop Nylon Athotep soon, it would be too short for a shot of whiskey. And that wasn't any sort of life I wanted. Somehow, I had to get the Felchion into the portal before it was too late. Time was short. I had to reach that portal somehow. The question was, how? It always looked much easier in the clickies. The contraption that Leonard and two conquerors had been working on was my only chance. Well, it's finished. Now all we have to do is fly it. And I'm volunteering. Ah, hello again. You want to be the person in the seat that guides the device? I'm going to have to be. We still need somewhere long and flat to launch it from. I'll see what I can do. There was debris scattered all over the roof. It didn't take me long to get the roof clear of rubble. I hope there was no one down below when it hit the ground. I've cleared the rubble off the roof. Can we launch this from there? It might just work. Give me a hand moving it out there and we'll see what happens. The device was ready to fly. All I had to do was pluck up enough courage to do it. Seconds before I could launch, Ilsa came flying down the rooftop. Wait! What are you doing here? How did you find me? Luton, you can see this device from halfway across the city. All you have to do is look up. Why did you stop me? You're going to try and stop Nylonathotep in this? It's all I've got. Carlotta said if I took the sword into the portal, I could stop it. You can't go up against a creature from the dungeon dimensions without some sort of protection. Protection? Like what? I don't know, but you need something. All right, I'll see what I can do. The symbol I'd found in the sanctuary was the ancient Elver sign which apparently was a ward against the old dark gods of the Discworld. I inscribed the sign of the eel on the side of the flapping wing flying device. I hoped it was enough protection. I was going to need all the help I could get. The device was ready to fly. All I had to do was pluck up enough courage to do it.
This is it, Ilsa. I have my protection. Wish me luck. This is crazy, Luton. It's suicide. I know, but I have to do it. I'm the only one who can. Now, wish me luck. I slotted the trapezohedron into the sword and steered the flying machine towards the portal, pedaling as fast as my tired little legs could manage. I kept flying onwards, the sky full of flame and thunder. It was a million to one chance that I could land it safely, but on the disc world, million to one chances happen nine times out of ten. Nice landing, Luton. Who do you think you are? My guardian angel? Oh, I lost my wings a long time ago. I can see I'm going to have to get used to finding you where I least expect. Yeah. Sounds about right. My original launch had attracted a lot of attention. I'd saved the city, but that didn't change things with Remora. If I didn't get out of the city, there was no telling what he'd do to me. Two conquers, get the flapping wing flying device ready. It's going on another flight. Oh, as you are wishing. Where are you going? I'm not going anywhere, but you are. The Assassin's Guild still has a contract out on your husband's head, and they won't stop until he's dead. Let him go. I'll stay here with you. I can't offer you much of a life, but he can. I love you, Luton. Yeah, I know. But love isn't always enough. If you don't get on that flying machine, you'll regret it. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. But soon. And for the rest of your life. Which won't be very long if the Assassin's Guild catches you. What about us? We'll always have the Hotel Pseudopolis. We didn't for a while. We lost it. But we got it back. And no one can take that away from us. Here's looking at you, Ilsa. Well... It's over. You really loved her, didn't you? I don't know. It doesn't make much sense to me. Well, don't ask me either. I mean, I'm a species that thinks someone's leg is an object of desire. Thanks, Gaspar. You know, this could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Don't push your luck, sonny boy. <laughs> <laughs>